any recommendation for the kids besides therapy? Uh, the one thing I mentioned just about like the emotional safe space, uh, depending on the age of the kids, I would definitely recommend looking into respectful parenting or no, how do they phrase it now? It's another word. Uh, authoritative, authoritative, huh. not authoritarian, authoritative parenting. Um, really like helping the kids process their emotions, like helping them process their feelings. A lot of times people don't have good um uh, good frameworks to be able to do that. But like, if you're able to start tapping into that, that's going to help a lot. He keeps finding ways and things to get reactions from me. I keep blocking, but it's nonetheless, uh, something like that. So how is he getting reactions from you if you're blocking? So there's an aspect that is not just him getting reactions. It's also this aspect of like making sure that he's blocked. So you can't react because he can't contact you. Okay. That's like the big thing you need to understand. Like until you actually block nurse is always going to be triggering you. Like if you have open contact, they're always going to be pressing the same button. They're always going to be getting to you no matter what. Because if I can connect with you, if I can text you, I know one day, 365 days, one of these days, you're going to feel down. You're going to feel lonely. And my text is going to get through and you're going to respond. Okay. This is why we go no contact. This is why we have the program that's in the bio to be able to help you break free from narcissistic abuse. Escapetoxicity.com. Seven-day challenge, $7. Like, it's just to be able to help you understand what's actually there, what's actually real. Uh, next one is she never dreamed. Interesting. Why do they all say they have fatigue? Fatigue? I don't know. Uh, fatigue because they're so tired of holding all the shit in. I mean, I was always tired, but I was also like a workaholic and worked nonstop and then would come home. Yeah, it was, it was bad. Guy dated, was caught in so many lies, I found out the truth. Will he ever admit? So the question I have for you is, how many of them has he actually admitted? Or did you just catch them all? If he hasn't admitted any, probability is he's not going to admit any others. So you need to run, okay? Like at the end of the day, like unless a narcissist is willing to engage with the truth, nothing's going to set them free. Unless you're willing to engage with the truth, nothing's going to set you free. He triggers me through necessary contact about the, the children. So what you need to understand is that contact with the children needs to be only about the children and you need to like take a moment. So like if it's over text, I'd get to email. Like if it's over email, like get to a third party app, like whatever you need to do to be able to make sure that there is a buffer. You got to be able to set a buffer and you also need to learn how to be able to handle the triggers. Every trigger that is happening in your life, every trigger that is going through is telling you a story. Okay, like if you can grasp this, this is what we teach on all levels from escape toxicity, clarity challenge to like 90 day thriver community, like one on one with me. Like we teach people to change the story that you believe because typically your story is based in a fantasy, in a fiction. It is not based in reality because the narcissist has placed a bunch of lies on you. You have a bunch of stories that's been placed on you because of your upbringing, because of your childhood, because of your parents, because of your friends, because of previous partners, because of religion, because of education, all these things control you and until you start to get to the truth of the situation nothing will set you free you get a trigger it activates these feelings and these emotions they lead you to a story that you're telling yourself that says i need to respond this way think of it this way there's been a video that's gone around a couple times about people with blue hair okay like someone comes and they yell at you and you're like you're so stupid because you have blue hair and you're like i don't have blue hair it doesn't affect you right because it's not true a narcissist does a lot of things. They say, hey, you've got blue hair just to get a reaction out of you. And they get a reaction out of you, so why would they not keep doing it? But you have to work to control the triggers that are actually happening in your life. You control the triggers by the story that you're telling yourself. I had proof that my ex's lies still lied and shifted the blame onto me. Yeah. A lot of times they do that. Uh, uh, typically, it's from uh, abuse. Now, that could be emotional abuse, emotional trauma, uh, like physical sexual abuse, or it could be overbearing parents, uh, over enabling parents. There's a lot of different things. Ultimately, it's an in, incorrect like way of functioning of how do I actually deal with the guilt and the shame. Now, you have like early stuff too that affects it. So like being disconnected from the primary caregiver, like early on, like early on um, growing up, like that can result in having less gray matter in the brain of like different pieces of empathy. Like there's all different types of pieces. Um, but yeah, it's formed. It's formed, not born. He refuses third-party contact or apps. I'm going to have to go legal apparently, 100%. And, and also you can you can go, you, you need to go legal so you have it in writing. But then also once you have it in writing, like you cut everything off. Like if he chooses not to contact you through this, like through this one channel that you've agreed on or through this one channel that's been court ordered, like that's his loss. 
Okay. Like you need to force him onto it. And a lot of times you have to force it onto it by saying, Hey, totally, totally glad to communicate with you on this app. Otherwise I'm not going to do it. Like there's you setting a boundary. It's been two years. He kept me on the hook for the for the first six months till the mentors find out, am I safe now? So I would say the, the safest you are is when that person is hundred percent blocked and you've done the healing work to change the story in your head and the triggers you believe. 18 months post divorce, he's still emotionally abusing me and causes drama. We have four kids. A lot of times that does happen. Like you, like that part is like where you really have to double down and focus on you and your growth. Okay. No, I'm sorry, things have affected you. Yeah. A lot of times a very lame apology from a narcissist. They don't think there's anything wrong with them, plays a big part. 100 percent That's why they don't admit it. Um, what's my take on what? Um Addictive drug abuse too. A lot of times narcissists have a lot of addictions. Uh, it's it's not that like all addicts are narcissists and not all narcissists are addicts, but a lot of nar narcissists are prone to having addiction. Um, to blame you. What is pulling people back to narcissists is soul ties. You have to break the soul ties you have with them. Uh, yeah, I'd see that on some level, but that's not on every level. It's the trauma bond. It's people being like having a hope. Like having a hope that this person is going to change, having seeing the potential of that person, seeing the potential of the things that have happened and being like, maybe they will change. Maybe something will happen because you have people that like, I don't want this person. Like, why am I still attracted to it? Because you built an addiction to this person. Um, with the less grave method, can they improve empathy? Uh, no, not necessarily like the emotional empathy, but more like they can learn cognitive empathy, that aspect. How do I deal with parental alienation? I need some more info on that. Like your parents don't talk to you or like, what are we talking about there? Um, your opinion on taking testosterone injections and crazy behavior. Uh, a lot of times it does produce some crazy behavior. Uh, it ultimately doesn't control their decisions. So there's also a piece of like accountability that has to happen there. Um, tried to leave. He hit audios and found out that child being worse and turning son against me. Yeah, hundred percent true. Toxic parents are worse than parent missing. Uh, people probably wouldn't have continued. Probably wouldn't continue the same type of relation, including one. I just slit my throat twice. It took seven years old to begin being peaceful. Hmm. My ex is narcissist. Uh, now I know the son. He has a twenty-year-old. How to deal with? How to deal with this? Son, now my son, he is not as in. No, uh, I'm not sure the question. If your ex is a narcissist and you're not with your ex, then block your ex. And if you want to talk to your son who's not a narcissist, then talk to your son. Do narcissists ever feel bad for what they've done? Typically, a narcissist never feels any type of remorse, and any type of remorse is like boxed up and compartmentalized and pushed to the side as quick as possible, and then rewrote. Like, oh, that didn't actually happen. Like, I had to do that because I was getting abused. I had to do that because this person was attacking me. We see this happen time and time again.